Live music is back in Port St. Lucie. We're previewing some of the best acts in the highly anticipated return of the We Love Lucie concert series. We spoke with sports stars of Florida's past at a local charity event. Hear their thoughts on PSL as the new home of the Florida Sports Hall of Fame. And the stars and stripes certainly got their due this 4th of July. We'll have the highlights from Freedom Fest. The agenda starts now. Welcome back to another episode of The Agenda, coming to you this week from the new home of the Florida Sports Hall of Fame. That's right, Ben. The Mid-Florida Event Center just keeps adding to the many things they offer here, and they're not done yet. Yeah, Sarah, plenty of exciting events coming up and plenty of other happenings in our city. Let's take a look ahead. We can't believe summer vacation is nearing an end, but school buses will be back on the roads on August 10th for the first day of public schools in St. Lucie County. Please remember to keep an extra eye out while driving for students walking to their bus stops and please obey the rules for stopping for buses and school crossing guards. To help prepare for the school year, don't forget to take advantage of the State of Florida's Back to School tax-free holiday, which runs from Saturday, July 31st to Monday, August 9th. State lawmakers approved nearly tripling the length of the holiday this year from three days to 10 days. Parents can take advantage of no sales tax on certain types of items such as clothing, school supplies, and computers. And as our students head back to the classroom after a difficult pandemic year, we wanted to take a minute to highlight some of the fantastic accomplishments of St. Lucie Public Schools. Did you know that the district is ranked first in the state for academic growth? It has a 93% overall graduation rate with a 98% graduation rate for traditional high schools. Our public schools are also one of the top producers of industry certifications and they've been recognized as a Cambridge District of the Year. We can't wait to see what great things our students will achieve this year. A few big names will be right here at the Mid-Florida Event Center in the upcoming months, and now is the time to buy your tickets so you don't miss out. Join us as six nationally acclaimed musical acts take the Event Center stage as part of the We Love Lucy concert series. Is classic rock your thing? Well, then you need to mark your calendar for October 9th to see Fog Hat with opening act Sacred Union. But that's not all. We also have Molly Hatchett and the Fabulous Thunderbirds coming to town November 20th. And then the Little River Band with opening act Wired Band will be taking the stage April 9th. If country music is more your style, then get your tickets now for country music legends Jody Messina and Tracy Bird on February 11th. Tickets are available at the Mid-Florida Event Center box office or online at etix.com. Well, speaking of going country, if you like Alan Jackson and want to get back to your roots, there's certainly a great opportunity coming up to do just that at KPSLV's Tree Giveaway. The city's Spread the Shade Tree Giveaway returns to the PSL Botanical Gardens September 18th. We suggest getting there early as these trees go fast. And one of their largest assortments yet, KPSLB will be giving away mango, avocado, pomegranate, green buttonwood, royal poinciana, gumbo limbo, and red maple trees. This popular event is a drive through with trees being given away on a first-come, first-served basis to PSL residents while supplies last. The KPSW committee hopes to protect native plants for future generations and encourage public awareness about the need to maintain PSL's natural beauty. That's why they hold two of these tree giveaways every year. Well, KPSLB may be all about going green, but these kids are all about going blue. This summer, PSLPD brought back the Junior Police Academy, where 12 to 14 year olds got a chance to see what it would be like to attend a police academy. Our Junior Police Academy cadets had an adventurous two weeks filled with activities, including drill and march, team building exercises, crime scene investigation, land navigation, physical training, and of course, they got to meet our K-9 team. But most importantly, everyone had fun. As with any uh, academy class that comes through the program, there's pride in watching them. The progression from day one through graduation day is, it, it's very noticeable. You're doing a thousand times better than you were doing yesterday. Especially when it comes to the program's drill and ceremony, where the kids come in and they have no idea what a left face or a right face or any kind of facing movements are. And they've never marched before in sequence with other kids. And by the time they graduate, they're all in step. They've all learned the facing movements and they complete all of them. Their knowledge of everything that we're instructing them and teaching them, they're soaking that in. 
the physical fitness. Most kids don't get out and play out in, out in the woods or the, or the streets like we used to do when we were growing up. We're putting them through some physical tests and, and you know, the farther we push them, the farther they excel. Their teamwork and their self-confidence is the big thing that they, they, uh, they learn while they're here. They are thrown in with a bunch of kids that they have no idea who each other are. And by the end of the uh, two weeks, they're a team. They're a very well-disciplined team. I just want them to continue okay. building on their self-pride and discipline. I also want them to continue challenging themselves to remain mentally and physically fit. We just hope that they had some fun, learned a few new things, and enjoyed the time that they got to spend with the officers of the Port St. Lucie Police Department. Uh, we wish them all a safe and happy in, uh, future in whatever they, they do, and we want them to stay safe and always know that we're here for them. If you know of a future junior police cadet, be sure to look for this exciting opportunity next summer. PSL will join communities around the world on August 31st to remember those lost and severely injured by drug overdoses. International Overdose Awareness Day seeks new ways to better understand overdoses by reducing the stigma of drug-related deaths and reducing the harms associated with drug use. All are welcome to join us for an Overdose Awareness Remembrance Ceremony hosted by our Parks and Recreation Department at the Boardwalk at the Port District. The evening will begin with a candlelight procession along the Boardwalk. This 90-minute event will include music, light refreshments, and a reading of names of loved ones who have died from a drug overdose. Participants are welcome to bring an old pair of shoes, sandals, or boots to leave on display commemorating those we have lost. Items will later be donated to the Salvation Army for those in need. By holding an event this year, the people of Port St. Lucie are adding to the global movement for understanding, compassion, and change. The Overdose Awareness Day ceremony is part of a larger award-winning health awareness program produced by the city's Parks and Recreation Department called Healthy You. This year-long series of free sessions covers topics like bullying, gender violence, dementia, eating disorders, stress management, bipolar affective disorder, depression, and anxiety. To learn more about the program and see what sessions are upcoming, visit pslparks.com slash healthyu. Well, it was summertime at its finest this 4th of July for a fan favorite event, Freedom Fest. Once again, we enjoyed all things red, white, and blue at this annual celebration of our nation's independence. Thousands enjoyed the festival produced by the city's Parks and Recreation Department and the area's largest and most spectacular fireworks display. And inside the event center, a sold out crowd took advantage of the air conditioning, delicious food and drinks, and lots of fun activities at the ultimate experience here inside the ballroom. Those lucky guests also had the best seats in the house on the terrace to watch the sky light up at the end of the night. Well, they may not have lit up the sky, but they certainly lit up a few scoreboards and in doing so earned a place in history. If you haven't visited the Florida Sports Hall of Fame yet, you need to stop by the event center. Here you're guaranteed to learn something you didn't know about the many athletes who have called Florida home. One of those Florida Sports Hall of Famers is golfer Chi Chi Rodriguez, who recently served as honorary tournament chairman for the fourth annual Florida Sports Hall of Fame Celebrity Golf Classic. Hey, welcome to the VIP Legends reception here at the Florida Sports Hall of Fame. I think it's huge for it to be here in Port St. Lucie. You know, just the city opening up its arms, being able to do a deal with the Florida Sports Hall of Fame, had a facility here. It's like I know we've been jumping around the past couple years events here and there, which I think is excellent, but having a home, it's so incredible. I am very, very, very happy that it's here in Port St. Lucie and now we have a home of our own. I am so excited about what we have going on here at Port St. Lucie and with what Barry and the board have done. If you live in the state of Florida, you need to know what has happened in the state of Florida and who made it happen in the state of Florida. And this facility right here for the Florida Sports Hall of Fame, I don't think we could have asked for a better place. And we, we are so very thankful that the, you know, the city, county, it, it's an all in. To come home and see what Florida Hall of Fame is doing, you've got to be very happy because it's a chance to honor all the greatness that is in the state of Florida. I want to be an ambassador for the Hall. I want guys to make sure they come back and be a part of it. That's the only way we're going to make this thing 
grow. Well, you know, the, the staff here at Mid Florida Event Center has made this a Class A event. If we could please have a round of applause for all the staff that supported and housed this for us. The care that they put into it to make sure all the former players like myself and even all the donors here are having a great time. So it's a really great event. And if you're not a part of it, you need to get to be a part of it. Well, it was so exciting to have all of those celebrity athletes in PSL. As you can see, the Hall of Fame includes more than 60 memorabilia exhibits and is open inside the event center from Wednesday through Sunday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. In today's spotlight, we want to thank a group of City of Port St. Lucie employees, along with first responders from St. Lucie and Martin County Fire Districts, for their heroic efforts that helped save the life of a local construction worker. On July 7th, several employees from the Utility Systems Department, Public Works Department, and PSLPD all helped lead to the rescue of a man who was trapped inside a 30-foot hole that was rapidly filling up with water. The worker was submerged for more than two hours. Thanks to the training and immediate actions by the first responders and the city employees, the man was rescued and is alive today. Special thanks to these staff members from the Utility Systems Department, Public Works Department, and the PSLPD for their efforts that day. That'll do it for this episode of The Agenda. Make sure to follow us on your favorite social media platform for constant updates on what's happening in your hometown. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our latest video content. I'm Benjamin Elliott. And I'm Sarah Prohaska. See, See you, you next time. time. Go, Go Gators! Gators.